Hey guys, thanks for watching Cheap Shot. In this video series, I'll be trying to print as many items from the Foscat library and other libraries and reviewing them, as well as giving those items to my Patreon supporters. Each part will have two videos, a short video and a long video. This is a long video. The short video is linked in the description. The long video is how the sausage gets made. Think of it more as a tutorial if you'd like to follow along. The short video is the meat and potatoes. Watch that video if you're just interested in seeing a review of the product. YouTube will most likely demonetize most of these videos, even ones that follow their guidelines. So please continue to support me by donating on Patreon and also for a chance to get any of these products that I make. Without further ado, let's get started. What are we making today? Glad you asked. Main file, miscellaneous, rail mounted foregrip. Let's do it. All right, so let's see what part we are going to make today. Um, let's go miscellaneous. What do we got? Loading strip, stackable ammo box, hard magazine pouch, pistol at cheek rest. What's this chamber flag? see what that looks like. Super ugly. That is ugly as sin. We're not making that. Um, crank trigger system. Dual Picatinny rail. Rail mounted foregrip. Oh, all right. So we kind of got a... That was good. Let's, let's make that. Looks like we painted it a little bit. You know, I should have some hex nuts sitting around that I'll be able to do it. Oh, it looks like we might have used like resin or something. So I wonder how well it's going to print with uh, FDM. But, uh, but we'll figure it out. So let's print that. All right. I don't want to do any uh, modifications to it, so we don't need to use Fusion. Let's load up Cura and see what Cura settings we're going to use. So let's bring in our model. Miscellaneous, where was it? Rail mounted foregrip, STLs, and let's bring in both of those. So we got our part. And we got a little retainer clip. Let's move that to the side. So one thing that is um, an issue with someone designing this is if we print it, we have this overhang right here. So no matter what, we have that. And that could have easily been solved. This could have been a fantastic print by just making the base um, either A, a little bigger, or B, chamfering this tool, uh, putting a little chamfer there. So we're gonna do that. Let's, you know, I lied. I said we're not gonna. I said we're not gonna mess with this model a little bit. We're gonna mess with this model. So let's open this up, and uh, you know, so basically what I'm saying is, as we print up with this, you know, we'll have to have support there because it's not gonna be able to do that 90 degrees. Now we could do it like this, and just have support underneath for all of this material. Um, but I don't, you know what, scratch that because this is hollow, that would be the, um, that would be the better way. And we like this being hollow cause it's actually going to be, um, a little bit stronger cause we'll have more walls on the inside. Um, so we're going to print it like this. We're not going to edit it. But what I would have done is I would have put some chamfers right there to just kind of make that a, a steady curve. But because we're empty in here, we'll print it in this orientation. And, uh, and we'll be good to go. Circles, we want to make sure we print those circles on the side. That way we get them as nice as possible. Um, these circles down here, they don't really matter. We'll do fine with that. So here's the front of my machine. We'll print them like this. We're going to spin this around just so we can check the supports as it creates the supports. Looking good. Um, We'll take and we'll move these pieces together 
and um, and and we'll give it a a, a brim. No, we'll give it a skirt. Um, we can always clean it up a little bit. Uh, I'm not really worried about this piece popping off because um, it's just going to be on there for such a short time. I'm sorry, not a skirt. I want to do a brim. And we can clean that up a little bit. I just don't want this piece to kind of start peeling up because it, it won't be very, very nice. And we want these pieces nice and flat because they're going to mate together. And we'll use a deburring tool to get it out of there. For generate support, I like to use tree supports, but for this, since this is this low, flat surface, we're just going to use um, normal supports and break it off. So, looking pretty good. Four hours and 27 minutes. You know, like, like that could have been chamfered right there to get rid of that support. That could have been chamfered right there to get rid of that support. Um, it is what it is, though. Beggars can't be choosers. So uh, this is something we're going to hold on to. This is something that we're going to move around. Wall count. Let's bump this up. Generally do four. Uh, bottom layers. Three is fine. Top layers for four. I like to do one more on the top layer just because I want to make sure that that top layer is a very nice print. Um, so I'll be fine. Z seam alignment. Uh, because this is a round object, I want to uh, set where that's going to be. Back is totally fine. That works for me. Uh, and infill density. Let's see what that looks like. We don't really need to worry too much about infill density because these wall areas are just going to be so small. You know, having a higher density is going to take and just increase the print time exponentially, especially because, you know, they come up together. So we could probably almost print this um, with no infill if we really wanted to, especially. It would probably be messy. Um, so we're going to do 10. But really, if, if we wanted to print this second piece separate, um, we could print this tall piece with no infill. Uh, I'm pretty sure no problem for the most part. Our infill is just mostly to support the top layers. So we'll do that. I think it's uh, I think it's fine. I mean, we could also increase the uh, the wall lines to try and get rid of it, but I think this is acceptable. So we got 35 grams. Uh, let's print it in black. So let's uh, let's get that set up. So we'll turn the printer on. Be able to touch it to do its thing. We're going to heat up the hot end because I want to take this gray out. Come into my settings, heat my hot end. Doesn't really matter where I set it to. Just got to be up a little bit. And we'll do the bed at the same time. We'll get the bed warming up. I'm at the 55. We don't need to wait too long for uh, for that nozzle. Just kind of squeeze it in and give it a little pull and see if it comes out. And we're good. We're set. We got some Sunlu for uh, for Christmas. Never used it before. We'll give it a shot. The most satisfying part of any roll. Hi yeah. This is pretty cool. You get some free Velcro straps, huh? And it's very, it's very shiny. I normally prefer a, a dull or uh, more dull color, but this will work. 200, 230. I print around 200. We'll see how, uh, we'll see how this works. Every brand's a little different. 
slap it in. I get an issue where it doesn't really feed in right, so I just kind of pull it off, push it in, and bring it back in. For the life of me, when I first got my printer with the stock end, I just could never get it fed in, like, ever to save my freaking life. It was, it was almost embarrassing, to tell you the truth. And, uh, and yeah, so we're ready to prime. My build plate's still working pretty good. It's not too dirty, and it's not too unsticky it's quite sticky i don't use this anymore this little piece but it'll be fine so uh, let's slice it and get it printing we're going to send this off to the uh the printer we're going to use octoprint because i really like it if you don't like it you should get it or if you don't have it you should get it it, it really makes uh it really makes things very nice we need to make sure the webcam is set up. Want to connect? We can come over here to control. We can see what our camera looks like. That is ugly as shit. You can also see what the camera looks like on a Cura. That looks pretty good. Make sure we're at least reasonably live. That looks good. Who cares about that? We'll print it. Time lapse. Um, for this one, we're just going to use every 10 seconds. We'll have 30 seconds at the end. That'll be for. Uh, that'll be good for the people watching the quick video. And we want to come down to Spool Manager. We just put a new spool on, so we're going to do. Eason PLA black one. Black. All of this doesn't matter. So first use today. Thousand grams. We're going to print with that one. And yeah, we uh, look pretty good up in here. So we'll go ahead and print with Octoprint. It'll send it to Octoprint and then uh, and then we'll it'll get kicking on its own. So it's really nice because if you like set it up, um, if you set it up right, you can essentially print it from anywhere you want. Uh, and this is just nice. I, I just I just really like Octoprint. I didn't think I'd be able to do it because I got the Big Tree Tech Board, uh, but it turns out I can. And uh, it was very easy. It probably took about 20 minutes to get it set up. This is kind of slow. I'm using a very old pie. Um, one of the first ones that came with uh, the Wi-Fi on them. So I'm not sure when that came out. I think that was like 2016, I think is when that is. Which is a game changer if you've been messing around with pies for a while. It really sucked. 
plug in the Ethernet in. I remember I'd be like messing around with something, um, and rather than drag an Ethernet cord, I would bring my laptop, and I'd put the Ethernet cord from the laptop into the Pi, and I would bridge the connections. So, uh, <laughs> just so I don't have to, you know, I still got to plug it in. Well, I guess I maybe I powered it from the laptop. I'm pretty sure I had to plug it in, but it just meant you didn't have to carry around uh, an Ethernet cord from wherever you went to wherever you went because I was living in the barracks at the time. I didn't like have a place to plug in. Oh, it's taking forever. I got various plugins on my Octopi. Um, one of the ones I really like is, I forget what it's called, but it's Better um, Estimates estimates of the, uh, of the Time. And it works pretty well. Especially because, like, I don't know if it's some sort of undervoltage or, or something, but... Um, I feel like my printer is a little slower than what it's supposed to be. So like if I said to move at 50 millimeters a second, I think it's really moving at like, you know, not 40, but maybe like 45. So I generally always, and then, you know, you always have your acceleration and your jerk settings. So as long as your acceleration and your jerk settings are fine, you know, you could essentially set it to an infinite amount of millimeters per second, in my opinion, and it wouldn't really matter. So. A lot of times, if the print seems it's going good and, you know, it's it's nice and healthy, if I'm patient, I'll crank that dial up to, you know, 200%. I'll double the speed. And naturally, it's not doubling on everything because you have the acceleration and you have the jerk settings, but, uh, but it will work. So one thing a lot of people don't know is, like, you have your speed and you have your acceleration. Um, and, you know, you take the, you know, you take the derivative and your acceleration and you have your jerk. Um, and then if you take the derivative of your acceleration or of your jerk, you have what's called a snap. Uh, and then you would never take the derivative of that, but the derivative of your snap is your crackle and the derivative of your crackle is your pop. So you have speed, acceleration, jerk, snap, crackle, and pop. I don't know. People who like calculus are weird. And, uh, if you ask the University of Iowa, I've taken four calculus classes. And, uh, I probably couldn't tell you a damn thing. Don't tell them that. Well, you can tell them that, but it sucks. I remember in Calc 1, I told my I told my TA, I said, hey, you know, I, re I really like calculus. You know, with, with calculus, I can take in. If I want to pump water out of a well, I can use them. I want to figure out how much power I can use. I can use calculus, and I can put the uh, the pump on a float, and that way I can take the first you know first foot of water, and I can only pump that out a foot. And I can take the second foot of water, and I pump that two feet, and I take the third foot of water, and I pump that three feet for you know ten feet of water. But if I wanted to figure out my power with algebra, it would either a take quite a while, or b I'd have to sink my pump to the bottom of the well and pump the first foot 10 feet, the second foot 10 feet, the third foot 10 feet. So calculus saves me a lot of power. And um, she looked at me like, what the hell are you talking about? I go, what do you mean what the hell do I talk about? Like, are you telling me you're trying to get like your doctorate in freaking math and you don't know, you, like, you can't think of one real world example where you might use this stuff? Like, it, it's kidding. Like, you're kidding me. So... We sent it to Octoprint. Octoprint's going to take and start warming up, probably. This is weird. There we go, I think. That is really weird. Did we just sit here and just run our suck just the whole time that it's not working?
There we go. All right, printing. So, Creality Under 3 Pro, 4 grip retainer, dot G code, user, time lapse 10 seconds. It says it's going to take 4 hours and 2 minutes 11 seconds. What did it say on here? It said 3 hours 52 minutes. So, my Octopi is telling me it's a little less. It's going to take and it's going to warm up up to 60 because that's what I have it set to. And then it'll uh, and then it'll take and start doing its BL touch stuff. One thing to notice is some of these streams, when you look at them from the Octoprint, they're uh, a little slow. Same thing with the Cura stream. You know, it's moving right now, um, but you can't see it on here. I can close Cura. The Cura's done, and uh, it'll just keep moving uh, on the Octopi. So. I think if I was at Octolapse, it's a little live now. Octolapse is pretty nice too, but we're just going to try the time lapse for now. So, yep. Yeah. I will see you guys in three hours, 58 minutes, and 33 seconds. Let's do it. So this would be the part where uh, I show you the finished product and I put it on my rifle and we review it. Uh, but unfortunately it broke already. So it, it went on pretty nice. We put some, uh, uh, I'm not sure, I think M4 bolts in here. Um, they threaded in nice. It, it seemed to hold on fine. And then when I gave it a nice good, but when I gave it a nice good tug, it, uh, it broke on this seam line, which is arguably the weakest point on this print. So a little bit of reviews. It, it feels very nice, um, actually. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well um, your hand held onto it. One thing that I wish, though, is I wish it had maybe one more notch to just give me an option if I wanted to go up or down. Um, and then these little squares are very pointy. They You have to hold up on that, and you're either digging into the web of your thumb or you're digging into your finger. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's really uncomfortable. So you can see here on this thin layer line where it broke. Now that's understandable. That was arguably the weakest part of this print. So uh, there'll be another video where I'm going to take and I'm going to improve on this print. So one thing that we're going to do uh, is we're going to take and we're going to cap the bottom, but we're still going to keep these two lines on the inside. And what that's going to do is it's going to let us print in any orientation we really want to, but it will also still keep these you know, inner wall and outer walls for stability. Uh, we're gonna round these edges. This can be a little bit bigger and those edges can be round and this can be perfectly fine. As well as we're gonna add some um, almost like grooves to the outside of those two parts. Just so that way, you know, cause right now the wear lines are like this. So it, it can completely bend. We just wanna add just a little bit of support um, just so it can't bend that way. You'll hardly even be able to feel it. It'll honestly just be like two layer lines shifted over. Uh, but watch out for that video. We'll do that. So design quality, we're going to go with two out of five. All right. There's some things that could have been done differently, but overall, I like it. I understand that this was probably a, uh, a hard thing to, to model for someone. Um, so I'm going to hand it that two out of five. It went on easy. Like I said, it felt fine. If you're doing like a 3D printed firearm and you want to you know, have all the 3D printed accessories on it, this is a great option. I would I would download this. Um, I would download mine that I'm going to fix, uh, and, and then you'll be fine. Um, overall item usage, once again, we're going to stay with two, two out of five on that one. Overall usage, we're going to stick with that. Two out of five. Total score, two out of five. Would I print this? Eh, yeah, I'd print one, but I'd fix it a little bit. So thanks for watching Cheap Shot.